Welcome to Studio 5. A Caribbean musical artist is making a worldwide impact, and he is in Studio 5 this week. The director of Kung Fu Panda 4 gives us an inside look at the film, and we hit the court with college basketball coach Jerome Tang for a story of faith on the field. But we begin with this week's countdown of the top five stories in the world of uplifting entertainment. At number five, The Bloody Hundredth begins streaming on Apple TV Plus just in time for the series finale of its series, Masters of the Air. This documentary takes audiences back to World War II and tells the real life stories of the men who inspired the series. It also explores the significance of the bomber, which was also known as the Flying Fortress. Actor Tom Hanks serves as the film's narrator. One of these groups suffered so many casualties, it became known as the Bloody Hundred. These men don't forget these missions. They, I mean, I interviewed two of them uh, uh, who were 100 and 101 at the time. Wow. John Lucky Lucky Do was 100 and Bob Wolf was 101. And, you know, they may forget some of the mundane things that happen on a, you know, a given Tuesday if they're not flying that particular day, but they do not forget those missions. The men and the women of the Air Force really paved the way for air superiority over Germany. The people we served with sacrificed everything. They called us the Bloody Hundredth. At number four. Obsession with what is clean and unclean was farther than God intended. An important development for the hit series The Chosen about the life and ministry of Jesus, the creator and director of the series, Dallas Jenkins, announcing online season four of the series will not come to streaming as soon as planned for financial and legal reasons. We cannot release season four to streaming now, uh, and there will be a delay, a delay longer than we anticipated and hoped for. Uh, there are some legal matters that we are dealing with right now that are hopefully being resolved. Um, and they are, in fact, uh, the goal is to have them resolved so that we can long-term and short-term better serve you, uh, ensure the show remains free forever and gets to over a billion people. Keep in mind, it's not coming as fast as we wanted to, it's the free streaming, but it is coming to the Chosen app. So bear in mind, it will be coming to the Chosen app as soon as we can, and it will be free forever. And those are the first two stories in this week's countdown. The remaining three stories are soon to come. We want to turn now to Caribbean gospel artist Sherwin Gardner. He has a song that's taken the world by storm. Find Me Here began as a New Year anthem, but social media has given it quite a different story, and it is massive. Something good gonna happen in this year. Find me here, 940 million streams and counting. Where'd this song come from? What happened? Uh, this is definitely um, the Holy Spirit is the best, <laughs> the best answer. Gonna find me here. Oh, yeah. I always was saying this in, in worship. I worship lead in the Bahamas and mm -hmm. Bahamas Harvest Church. But at the end of worship, when I pray, I always say something good is going to happen for you. And... Um, I then heard the melody in my head on the 23rd of December, something good is gonna happen in this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful that I made it here. So mm -hmm. I, I recorded that little mel melody and then I finished the production. But then the Lord was nudging me and saying, hey, blessings need to find you here. Favor gonna find you here. Favor gonna find me here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm missing money gonna find me. So this wasn't really supposed to be like a big release. It's, yeah. it's just 46 seconds. <laughs> you know, 46 it, seconds. <laughs> yeah, it was just a 46 <laughs> second clip. You know, as artists, you, you try to stay relevant on social media. Mm -hmm. So that's what that was. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it's also a personal prayer mm -hmm. for me saying that something good is going to find me here. And I'm grateful that I made it here. Mm -hmm. Blessings going to find me here. Favor going to find me here. Money going to find me here. You've been singing since five? Yeah. 
I am what they call the miracle child in my family because mm. my mom, uh, she when she was pregnant with me at that time, she didn't know and she was very sick. All the doctors told my mom because she was sick and because of all the tests and the different things that she did, she had to abort me because I'd, I, I would either, either be deformed or crippled or stillbirth and you know, all the different scientific ways that or reasons and she said if God give life he's the only one could take life and uh, she put me into the hands of the Lord and from five years old um, I started singing I, 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 I'm just a little dark but outside of that I do have no issues <laughs> <laughs> health wise you know so I, I'm, I'm good you know and, and God is he showed himself faithful from then mm -hmm. and he's showing himself faithful to now you know because 40 years is, sig uh, is significant that this could happen on the beginning of my 40th anniversary mm -hmm. you know as the Bible says like coming out of the wilderness into the promised land you yeah. know so this is that season where you're really coming out into the promised land you know? These seasons I've been facing, but this year your blessings I'm embracing. My TikTok was at 20,000 followers. I called one of my friends who was an artist and I said, listen, this song is going viral. <laughs> like, it's going up. So he's like, going viral? <laughs> <laughs> your song is already viral because he's in Trinidad and mm -hmm. it was everybody's using already, it. Oh, wow. So everybody is already using it. Since then, it's been a journey. This song that is just an affirmation is now being used by many people. Yeah. It's still on the charts now, you know, mm -hmm. and that in, in itself just shows how far this blessing is going. Blessings have become my way. Winning, we winning and we here to stay. Is the blessings me say will find me here. 943 million people just heard a song that speaks about favor, speaks mm -hmm. about blessings, speaks about the goodness of God and, mm -hmm. and being hopeful yeah. for good things to happen for them in their life. And that to me is more outstanding than just being on the billboard or being uh, here and there. But mm -hmm. you know, knowing that people are now using this affirmation um, in their videos yes, yes. <laughs> is, is shining light on who he is and the goodness of God. Oh, I love it. I love it. How has this changed your life? I had my share of success, but nothing in comparison to, to, to this song. Um, I think it put me in a, a different conversation and it opened up doors for me to be able to do as the Bible say, go in there for and preach and teach to all nations. Yes. You know, God is just opening these doors and, and um, really it's something that is just, I would say, an unusual mm -hmm. <laughs> blessing, mm -hmm. but it's really something that I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to him for because this is not about me, but it's about pointing people to him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I miss the blessings gonna find me. And Find Me Here is available wherever you download, purchase, and stream your music. It will inspire. Just moments away. In a sesame sort of glaze. This is not working at all. Still topping the box office, we've got a look at Kung Fu Panda 4 in a Studio 5 sit down with the animated film's director. Where's the skadoosh? You know what I mean? The shashaburi! See why this newest installment is so special to all involved. I didn't just want to make another one. The story had to be great. It had to be a story that continues Poe's adventure and and uh, have a lesson for him to learn. At number three, snapshots from the final award show of the season and a quick look at the big winners. More accolades for Usher, the latest at the 55th NAACP Image Awards. A month after his Super Bowl halftime performance, Usher took home the honors for Outstanding Male Artist and the top prize, Entertainer of the Year. Other winners were Taraji P. Henson for Best Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture, Fantasia Barino for Best Actress in a Motion Picture. The Outstanding Motion Picture Award went to the color purple. At number two. One, two, three. I'm a little worried about Carrie and Tim. They don't look at each other the same way anymore. A Studio 5 sneak peek at The Baxters, a new series streaming to Prime Video Easter weekend, based on the work of best-selling author Karen Kingsbury and starring Roma Downey. Roma, why this as a series? What, what made you want to do this? Well, I 
was first introduced to the Karen Kingsbury best-selling book series, mm -hmm. The Baxters, through a friend who gave me the first book to read on a lengthy plane ride. The book was called Redemption. I mm. couldn't put it down. I reached out to Karen Kingsbury. I said, Karen, would you ever consider allowing me the rights to option your book, to bring it to TV? And she said, you don't know. This is an answer to a prayer. She wow. said, 15 years ago, when I first wrote this book, my father said to me, this should be a TV show and you should reach out to Roma Downey. I was, <laughs> couldn't make this up. You couldn't make it up. So <clears throat> he had been waiting on this phone call for 15 years for me. And we both knew in that moment that it was a God thing. You cannot move beyond this guilt until you find the courage to allow yourself to just feel. Forgiveness happens once. Healing takes a lifetime. And with that, we've got just one more story to share in this week's countdown that's coming up in just a few moments. Now we turn to Kung Fu Panda 4. It is the latest installment in this wildly popular animated martial arts series. We're sitting down with the director of the film, Mike Mitchell. It was against an army. Then we'll just have to get an army of our own. What is this place? You have a long history with this franchise. Why did you wait till now to assume the director's role? <laughs> uh, well, I gotta say, for this particular one, I didn't just want to make another one. The story had to be great. It had to be a story that continues Poe's adventure and, and uh, have a lesson for him to learn and, and be as epic and as great as the previous three. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that's why this one took so long. See, what we like to do is run it all the way through a couple times and then break it down line by line. I'm not gonna be the dragon warrior anymore. You will advance to spiritual leader. Tell me this, what does Poe know about being a spiritual leader? He's getting a promotion here, if you know will. anything. <laughs> he doesn't want that job, he wants to be fighting. I don't want to seem ungrateful, but I don't know anything about passing on wisdom or inspiring hope. And that has to do with our theme, mm -hmm. is Poe doesn't want to move on. He's comfortable where he is. And uh, we thought that could be relatable to not just for kids, but also with, uh, with adults. If we have to go from one job to the next, there's a lot of anxiety with that or, or moving locations. And so we thought that it was something really relatable. And um, Poe learns, and I, I hope our audience kind of gets a piece of this too, that you, when you move on or when change happens, you're not leaving anything behind. You're not, you're still the same person, but maybe becoming something possibly even better. Master Shifu, I finally found something I'm good at, and now you want to just take it away from me? No one is taking anything away, Poe. Who you are will always be a part of what you become. I love that storyline. Tell me, how is it striking a balance for something that's going to reach and touch my child, but also touch me as we sit there together to watch it in the theater? Yeah, that's a great question. It's one of my favorite things about working on these films. I love it when we show a film and a dad is laughing and he looks at his eight-year-old daughter and she's laughing at the same joke. It's almost like a magic trick. I'm like, ah, oh, we did it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think this film kind of does it the best. I think it's like, I think everyone can enjoy this and get something out of it. Lee, would you please show a little backbone? I'm sorry, but bravery was never really my specialty. You don't have to be brave. You just have to act brave. Where did you first fall in love with animation? You've done a lot of things in television and film. When did you first fall in love with this? I just love, if you even see any of my live action films, they're almost like human cartoons anyway. So I just love, uh, Humor, I love family films. Those are always my favorite films, are family films. And so uh, I've always just had a love for animation. Who doesn't love animation, by the way? I don't think I've met anyone that's like, that's not for me. It's, again, they're films for everyone. It doesn't matter who your age is. Last question for you real quick. Yes. Where is your own personal valley of peace? Where is it at? My own personal valley of peace is at home with my family. I got two kids. I got a 17 and 19 year old boys. And I'm very happy that um, they attended the premiere with their dad and they weren't embarrassed to be with me and they told me that they loved the film afterwards. So I was so 
happy. Those are the two that I want to I want to impress. It's impossible for me to be a cool guy yeah. in front of those guys. So for once, for at least for 88 minutes, I was a cool guy. <laughs> I think I'm back to being the nerdy dad, but uh, yeah. but that's my valley of cool. peace. Kung Fu Panda 4 is in theaters right now nationwide. We need to take a break, but before we do, it's time to share this week's story in pictures. Here's your Studio 5 snapshot for this week. The Lord with me. That's the voice of gospel singer, songwriter, percussionist, and pastor Sandra Crouch, twin sister of the legendary Andre Crouch. A musical talent in her own right, Sandra won a Grammy for Best Gospel Performance in 1984 for her album We Sing Praises. Her most popular songs are Completely Yes, Power in the Blood, No Greater Love, We Need to Hear From You, and Magnify the Lord. She died Sunday at age 81 and we salute her life well lived in this Studio 5 snapshot. Still to come, from Bible quiz coach to national coach of the year. At one point in time, I could quote up to close to 16 books of the Bible. That was the foundation of my coaching. Kansas State's Jerome Tang shares why he's convinced the Wildcats are destined to win a national championship and how success can come from the least likely place. At number one. Now, an extraordinary story about a man who rescued refugees at the mercy of Hitler's invasion. An incredible piece of history hits the big screen. Is there anyone in the audience who owes their life to Nicholas Winton? One Life is based on the life of a British stockbroker who risked his life to help more than 600 Jewish children escape Nazis in Czechoslovakia in 1938, just before World War II. Sir Anthony Hopkins plays the role of Sir Nicholas Winton. He kept a scrapbook, meticulously kept all the names of the children. And he didn't want any publicity, nobody knew about it. And he was exposed publicly by Esther Ranston. This young man decided that something had to be done. What was it like directing this story? I can only imagine a burden and a blessing. What was it like? Uh, yes, it was that. And that clip, we talk about that studio moment. That, that is both uh, a blessing and a tank trap because uh, everybody's used, seen it, they've been moved by it. So what are you going to do in the drama that is going to be at least as emotional? Um, one of the things we did was recruit some of the children of the children that Nicholas Quinton actually saved to be the audience. Wow. So when the presenter says, anybody owes their life to Nicholas Quinton, please stand, these guys really do. You have a lot of faith in ordinary people. Because I'm an ordinary person. Save one life, save the world. And that wraps this week's countdown. Welcome back to Studio 5. The Kansas State Wildcats are on the tournament bubble, but under head coach Jerome Tang, they've done some of their best work when their backs are against the wall. At one point in time, I could quote up to close to 16 books of the Bible. That was the foundation of my coaching. And, and God knew what he was doing because it was it also really established me as, as a man of God. I have this like crazy faith. Um, I, I always believed that was God's favorite. And, um, and I tell people they should feel the same way because scripture says that, you know, with an apple of his eye, the faith grows as God shows himself faithful to us. He said, you know, the job is yours. And that was like, that was incredible. I didn't know how long it was gonna take or but, but I knew we were going to win and because we just had great people around us and hard workers and, and we was going to follow the direction of coach being led by the Lord and the Holy Spirit. You know, God is so good and uh, his timing is perfect, right? And it's never perfect for us in our minds, but it's perfect for us in our journey. When we won it, it was nice, but I had already come to a point in my life where my walk with God and who I am in Him 
was fulfilling and satisfying. I realized that it's another platform that God's given me in order to bring honor and glory to Him, but also to really be able to talk about the great men that I live life with. We're gonna win a national championship. And, and more importantly, I believe what, uh, it's really clear, Jesus is real, really clear. By this, all men will know that you're my disciples if you have love one towards another, right? Not if you love those who look like you or those who vote like you or those who dress like you, but just love people. That's the ministry that God has like really stirred in my heart uh, that, that he wants us, me as a follower of Jesus, to show what it's like to love everybody. Quite a coach, Jerome Tang has actually earned the title Men's College Coach of the Year. Welcome back to Studio 5. Music helps us to bring you this show each and every week. And this week's soundtrack comes from the choir master, Ricky Dillard. Take a listen, you're gonna hear why glad to be in the service is what's playing in my ear this week. Glad to be in the service one more time. On that musical note, we are just about out of time for this week's edition of Studio 5. So let's take a quick moment and see what's coming up next week on our rundown. They call this the Bloody Hundredth. Get an even closer look at the new documentary honoring the real life heroes of the 100th Bomb Group. The people we served with sacrificed everything. Airmen from 40 American bomber groups bled and died in staggering numbers in air combat. One of these groups suffered so many casualties, it became known as the Bloody Hundred. Narrated by actor Tom Hanks, this film looks at what the men endured in World War II. What attracted you to this project as a story to tell? What was it? We found it really interesting to dig in and get to understand their experiences from a very visceral point of view. Hey, please make time to join us for that story and so much more come next week. As for this week, we've got time for just one more thing. We wanna give the final word to Sherwin Gardner. If you could go back in time and speak to that young five-year-old Sherwin as he began the journey, what would you tell that little boy? Really just, um you know, just hold on through, through everything. Uh, we, we're not going to see tomorrow, but if you have faith, which is the substance of things so funny, evidence of things not seen, just as this song is saying, something good is going to happen in this year. That's my hope. That is my hope, my faith. Um, speaking life, trust and believe that God will answer and he'll come true. Sherwin, that's a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and for this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then please come on back. See where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching.